And let the church say, Amen. The Lord bless everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray that this dominion God will grant to everyone the power to overcome, the power to triumph. The Lord will unleash it in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name for this service. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you because you grant us the victory. You grant us the dominion. You grant us the power. And as your people are going back from this retreat, the power they have never manifested, they will manifest. The dominion they have never seen, they will see. The authority they have never exercised, they will exercise. And you'll give total victory to everyone. Power to everyone. Authority to everyone. I pray, Lord, nothing of the world, nothing of the flesh, nothing of the devil will conquer anyone in Jesus' name. Our children will have the victory. Our youths will have the victory. Our campus students will have the victory. Our papas and mothers and everybody, adult, church, as you go, everywhere you go, you'll have the victory in Jesus' name. Songs of praise in your mouth. Songs of dominion in your mouth. From today, you'll never be the same again. Lord, confirm your word in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let the victorious church say, and let the church on the march say yeah. and the church that has dominion where are you let that church say yeah. praise the lord you've got it you'll never lose it in jesus name help me our bibles to luke chapter 22 luke Chapter 22, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Here Christ was talking to his own disciples. And he said, Ye are they, say people. Ye are they, repentant people. Ye are they, believing people. Ye are they, the people who have come out of the world. And they come to Christ, their Savior. He says, you are the one. And you have continued with me in my trials, in my temptation. Within the opposition, at the time of the opposition of those Pharisees, you have continued with me. And he says in verse 29, And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father has appointed unto me. Because they came to him, because they abode with him, because they stayed with him, because they held up the word he had given them. He now says, I'm going to appoint you a kingdom. And that kingdom, he says, he appoints, he says, it's as my father has appointed unto me. Then he says, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom what a glorious thing awaits you i say something glorious is awaiting you and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel and so you find there the promise of the lord which he made to those false disciples and this same promise of the lord is making to you and he's saying because you come to him and because you continue with him and because you are consecrated to him because you are committed to him because you surrender your heart your soul your spirit your life unto him he says he's going to appoint for you a kingdom and i pray you will not stop following the lord until you see that fulfillment in jesus name 
it tells us in Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 14 in Romans chapter 8 verse 14 it says for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God he has led you to repentance and you accepted he led you to confession and you accepted he led you to conversion and you accepted he led you to surrendering your life consecrating your life and you accepted as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god he led you to the depths of the word of god the teaching of the word of god the spirit of truth guiding you the spirit of truth leading you and you accepted the truth as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god then he goes on to say in verse 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear fear is cancelled out of your life you will not fear the beasts in the world you will not fear the wicked in the world you will not fear what man can do because now you are coming over somebody there said you are coming over it says he has not given us the spirit of fear he has actually uh, delivered us from the spirit of fear and he says and he have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father what's the spirit of adoption when you are adopted into the family you have the same right the same privilege as the naturally born child and there God is saying he accepts you as his beloved he accepts you as his, as his adopted child and he says the spirit now bear it witness with our spirit that we are the children of God as you have come to the Lord and the Spirit of God is testifying in your heart that you are a child of God now he tells us the consequence of that something great is coming your way are you there? he says something you've never known is coming your way he says and if children and if children and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together it tells us that we suffer with him persecution we suffer with him you know you sometimes are at a crossroad and then there are people that do this or that and it says if we bear those little little things we suffer with him then we're going to reign with him you have dominion already we're looking at second timothy chapter 2 Second Timothy chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 11. Second Timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 11 it is a faithful saying and it says for if we be dead with him we shall also live with him. You see you must consider two parts the two parts of that sentence it says we suffer with him he says we are dead with him and then we come to live with him look at verse 12 if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him i will not deny him if we deny him i said i will not deny him if you deny him you will not deny him if we deny him he also will deny us you know there are people that carry the banner of dominion and they deny christ the lord is telling them here is how to live they deny him and they're still saying i confess i have dominion i confess i have power my friend it doesn't work that way if you're going to have dominion you know what you must abide by his word you cannot deny him and you cannot reject him you cannot abandon him you cannot walk contrary to him and say i'm going to have dominion if you're going to have dominion and you're going to have dominion if you're going to reign i know you are going to reign if you're going to have power i know you are going to have power somebody there said you're going to have power then you make sure when temptation comes you say what do you say no i didn't hear you very well now 
and when all those uh, people come and they say why don't you take this shortcut and take this and take this what do you say no because you want to keep your dominion you want to keep that power it says if we suffer then we shall also reign with him if we deny him he also will deny us in verse 13 if we believe not thank god i'm a believer i say thank god i'm a believer in the morning i believe afternoon i believe evening i believe monday tuesday every day of the week i'm a believer anywhere i go whether pastor is there or pastor is not there whether anybody is watching or they're not watching thank god every moment of my life i'm a believer any believer there today and i pray you'll be faithful to that confession of your mouth in jesus name it says if we believe not yet he abided faithful and it says he cannot deny himself he will not deny himself we're looking at this message on the three perspectives number one our deliverance by the redeeming lord our deliverance by the redeeming lord point number two our dominion with the risen lord our dominion with the risen Lord. Point number three, our dedication to the reigning Lord. Our dedication to the reigning Lord. Point number one, tell me number one over there. I said tell me number one over there. Our deliverance by the redeeming Lord. You see, before you can have dominion, there will be deliverance. He delivers you first. And then he gives you dominion. And after having that dominion, you are dedicated to him. Because all the power, all the authority, all the promotion, all the ability to reign, you dedicate it and give it back to the Lord. Because you want to do something that will glorify his name every time our deliverance by the redeeming lord where does deliverance start you see there are people they start their deliverance from uh, the point of deliver me from satan deliver me from sickness deliver me from evil spirit deliver me from this yoke deliver me from this cause you know what there was nothing to be delivered of in the life of adam when he was created when he was created, he had the nature of God. He had the life of God. Let us create man in our image, after our likeness. Because there was no sin, Satan could not have a place in their lives. And because there was no sin, sickness could not have any place in their lives. But then sin came in, and you know what? Satan came in. Suffering came in. Sickness came in. All those evil things came in. Now, the people were saying, deliver me from sickness. Of course, God can deliver. But you know what Jesus said? He said, you have been healed, you are made whole. But sin no more, lest it was sin come unto you. Those who are delivered from sickness today, if they are not delivered from sin, another sickness will come back. Those who are delivered from evil spirit today, if they are not delivered from sin, evil spirits will come back. Those who are delivered from a particular problem, if they are not delivered from sin, you know what? Another problem will come. That's why the priority of a real child of God is, number one, deliver me from every, every iniquity, every transgression, every sin, every wrongdoing. Because when he delivers you from that, once darkness goes out, light will come coming i said light will come in i can't hear my people anymore once the sin goes out evil spirit will not have any place in your life and sickness will not have any place in your life and satan will not have any place in your life look at romans chapter 7 romans chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 24 romans chapter 7 verse 24 oh wretched man that i am O oh, wretched man that I am. Here is a man saying, I am wretched. I am to be pitied. I am dishonored. I am disgraced. I'm trampled down. And I'm powerless. 
and I'm hopeless O oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death what did he mean by that what kind of deliverance was he looking for who shall deliver me look at this look at verse 14 for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal I'm sold under sin he says, I'm carnal. I have carnality. And because of that, everything I try to do, I cannot do. I want to have the victory. I want to have the triumph. I want to have dominion. I cannot because I have carnality. And so he's saying, who shall deliver me out of this carnality? Look at verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not, no power, no strength, to overcome the devil no strength to overcome sin when temptation came he couldn't say no he was falling and falling every time that's why he said i want to be delivered from this then he goes on in verse 15 for what i would that i do not but what i hate that i do i tell you i hate evil but i do it i hate sin but i do that i hate immorality but I do that and when that sin has happened then I punish myself and I say I'm fasting and I fast and fast and fast and then I do it again and he says I've tried my best and because of this kind of weakness is praying who shall deliver me from this body of death he says in verse 16 if then I do that which I would not I consent unto the law that it is good now in verse 17 then it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me that's why he cried out and he said who shall deliver me you know if you are not delivered from sin secret sin if you are not delivered from sin, besetting sin, if you are not delivered from sin, occasional sin, if you are not delivered from sin, all those things you do in the private age that your, your conscience condemns you, there will be no other deliverance. Because once sin is there, sickness will creep in. One sin is there, evil spirit will creep in. One sin is there, Satan will rush in and take advantage of you. And I pray there will be total deliverance today. I said there will be total deliverance today. Deliverance from sin, deliverance from sickness, deliverance from spirit, and deliverance from every affliction. It will be affected in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 39, Psalm 39, and I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 39, and we're looking at verse 8. I'm waiting for you to open your Bible. Psalm, tell me. And verse, tell me. Are you there yet? I said, are you there? It says, deliver me from all my transgressions. You see David here, he knew. The presence of the Lord was with him. And the Lord gave him the victory over Goliath, over the Philistine. You know why? Because of clean conscience. Because of clear conscience. Because there was no, there was no defeat in his spiritual life. You see that man? Because at that time, he was the sweet psalmist of Israel. And he had the joy of the Lord. He had the triumph in the Lord. And because of that triumph, when Goliath came, he said, don't worry about him. I'll have dominion over him. When there's no guilt in your heart, when there's no condemnation in your heart, when there's no secret sin, you are going to have dominion. Somebody there said you are going to have dominion. But you know, if you are gambling with your soul, if you are living in sin, if you are living in deception, if you're living in lie, if you're defeated by sin, and then you say, I'm going to have dominion, Satan will laugh at you. I pray it will not happen like that to you. Because the person that, you know, he says, are you the one coming? Don't you remember those seven sons of Skavers? They came and they said they wanted to drive out the devil. We're going to have dominion. We're going to have power. We're going to have triumph. And he said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, and the evil spirit said, who are you by the way? I know your secret. I know your lie. 
You don't have dominion. You can't come here and command me and then lift on them and draw them out of the place. I pray that will not happen to you. And so David understood and David said, if I need any deliverance at all, look at this in verse 8, deliver me from all my transgressions. How many transgressions? How many transgressions? You know, there are people that say, you know, I'm trying nowadays. I've, uh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. Only this one remains. Only that one remains. Only lying remains. And only deception remains. Only hypocrisy remains. Only this and only that. And then you want to have dominion. And the devil says, liar, are you not my child? I am a liar, Satan says, and is the father of lies. And then you come and you say, I want to have dominion. He says, shut up. I'm your master. I'm a liar. You are a liar. I give back to you and you belong to me. But when you know that he has delivered you and delivered you from all transgressions, thank God I see free people there. I see dominion. I see people having dominion over there. And they triumph. The Lord will affect your life in Jesus' name. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. The reproach will get out of your life. I say reproach will get out of your life. Psalm 51, Psalm 51, I'm reading from verse 14. Psalm 51, and we're looking at verse 14. It says in verse 14, deliver me from blood guiltiness you see that you see that deliver me from blood guiltiness oh god he felt guilty he knew what he had done even some people in the nation knew what he had done his servants knew what he had done you might think that you know people don't know of course people know you cannot so cover up smoke that the smoke cannot come out isn't that why you tell your friend and you say look up at me here Put your finger in your mouth. You don't see everything you see. Why are you telling them that? If you're doing righteousness, you'll not tell them not to tell. If you're going the right way, you'll not tell them not to tell. If you're doing what is perfect and what is good and what is commendable, you'll not say, put your hand in your mouth. Don't ever talk. It's not everything you see as you are with me. It's not everything you see that you're going to tell people. And you, you cannot even tell your wife at home. You cannot tell your husband at home. It's not everything you see that you're going to tell. You know why you're saying that? You're guilty. You know why you're saying that? You're a sinner. You know why you're saying that? You're a backslider. That's why you're shutting up everybody. That's why somebody is talking to another person and then you're watching them. What are they talking? And then you call that person behind. I hope you're not revealing our secret. I hope you're not revealing what you have done blood guiltiness here david said i know other people know and i know it in my conscience and my neighbors know about this and he said deliver me he will deliver you i said he will deliver you total deliverance he delivers from blood guiltiness he delivers from evil he delivers from wickedness he delivers from sin he delivers from anything that is hidden anything you're trying to cover up like smoke and that smoke is oozing out that smoke is coming out and then you're saying lord you will cleanse me you will deliver me you will set me free and then there'll be no smoke anymore and when you're free i'm free indeed power will come out of your life in jesus name somebody there shout amen. amen we're looking at hebrews hebrews now i'm reading from chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 and we're looking at it from verse 14 hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death that is the devil he will do it i said he will do it because he'll destroy him that has the power of death even the devil and deliver them you see that when he destroys the power of satan when he destroys the origin of sickness when he destroys all the things that bring calamity into your life then he said tells us in verse 15 and deliver them 
who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage bondage is cancelled in jesus name i said bondage is cancelled in jesus name as you go out you go out in victory you go back home you go back with confidence you go back home you go back with total cleansing you go back home and i see a man i see a woman i see a boy i see a girl you're free and free indeed you're free from sin you're free from sickness you're free from satan you're free from failure you're free from defeat you're free from sorrow if somebody is there i'm talking to you say amen Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 4. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, it says, Who gave himself for our sins? He gave himself for our sins. That's the beginning point. And he delivers us from all those sins. And then it says, That she might deliver us, that she might deliver us from this present evil world every evil in the world you are delivered from them cause you are delivered from them yoke you are delivered from them the power of satan you are delivered from them any secret enemy behind the curtain somewhere and is saying i will get him i will get her uh, that's in the old days today they cannot get you anymore and they cannot touch you anymore because now he has delivered you he has delivered you from sin he has delivered you from iniquity he has delivered you from transgression he has delivered you from guilt and now he delivers you from the present evil world according to the will of god and the father deliverance i am delivered i said i am delivered i said i am delivered I want to remind you as he has healed you. I want to remind you as he has prospered you. I want to remind you as he has given you the victory. In John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 14. John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 14. John chapter 5. We're looking at verse 14. Look at verse 14. After what Jesus findeth him in the temple. Not in the beer paddle. He had, uh, Jesus had touched him and Jesus had healed him and Jesus had delivered him and afterward he findeth him uh, not in the you know gambling parlor no not at all not in the beer parlor afterward Jesus findeth him uh, is not in the on the bed of the adulteress on the bed of the adulterer Jesus findeth him after you are saved after you are born again after your sins have been forgiven and after he has giving you a miracle we don't find you in a sinful place anymore in a corrupt place anymore in a defiling place anymore things are different now we don't find you in a place there be corruption anymore because it says after what jesus find at him where did he find him where did he find him where will he find you i said where will he find you in the temple and then he said unto him behold thou art made whole behold thou art made whole that's me i said that's me somebody there said that's me he has made me whole i am healed i'm delivered i am set free i am protected i am preserved i am blessed See how you're saying, see how I'm saying my own. I am blessed. And then it says, Thou art made whole. Look at what follows. Tell me what if you read it in your Bible. You are made whole. Tell me what follows that. Uh, is that all? One, two, three, go. See no more, lest the worst thing come on thee think about that the man had been sick for 38 years and now jesus came raised him up he was healed made whole and now if he said praise the lord i'm delivered from sickness hold on hold on deliverance from sin forgiveness of sin cleansing from sin a holy life a righteous life a life that is free 
a life that is free from sin because it says sin no more lest it was sin was that what happened to him in 38 years will come upon him if he went back to sin that's why the very priority of the life of a child of god is deliverance from sin thank god you are delivered i said thank god you are delivered point number two now our dominion with the risen lord our dominion with the risen lord we're coming to romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 12 romans chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 12 he'll give you dominion i said he'll give you dominion you will triumph Everything that brought you under before, you'll come out of that place and you'll come on top in Jesus' name. It says in Romans chapter 6 verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. Let not covetousness pervade your heart, saturate your heart. Let not covetousness take over your life let not fraud take over your life let not sin reign in your mortal body let not adultery let not fornication reign in your mortal body and let not evil of any sense in any way of any size or shape reign in your mortal body he says let not let not let not therefore sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the laws thereof neither yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God for sin shall not have dominion over you sin shall not have dominion over you Look up at me here. Let's say I have a child and I'm sending the child to school. And then I tell him and I say, you're going to school. You have the brain. You have the mind. You have the books. You have the teachers. Now, as I go in, I say, failure will not have dominion over you. And then he goes and he's saying, my daddy said, failure will not have dominion over me. He didn't possess that thing. He didn't internalize that thing. And then he goes to class, he cannot understand what they're teaching. He writes an exam and he's not making it. He said, but daddy said, he's putting it on daddy because he has not internalized it. This verse will be translated and transmitted into your spirit in Jesus' name. This verse will be transmitted into your soul, into your mind, into your heart, into your life. And then instead of saying the pastor said, instead of saying Paul said, you will say, what will you say? I say, say that. And what do you say? For sin shall not have dominion over me. Can I hear somebody say that? I say, sin shall not have dominion over me. I'm a child of God somebody there i'm a child of god i have been to calvary christ has touched my life sin is out evil is out satan is out i stand on the right side of calvary i stand on the right side of calvary i come out of this place and I'm going with victory. Somebody there, I am going with victory. I'm going with triumph. I'm going with power. And I say, sin shall not have dominion over me. 
and you say that every time when the temptation is coming uh -uh, you are coming to the wrong person say shall not have dominion over me when the old sin partners and they come and they come to invite you again uh -uh. what are you being don't you remember what we used to do together come on now then you stand there what do you say See, shall not have dominion over me. You know, somebody in the secret, they want you to change the receipt. They want you to be fraudulent. And they want you to steal. And they're saying, you know, sign this or share whatever comes out. What do you say? See, shall not have dominion over me. Take it from the Bible, transfer it to your heart, make it part of your life, make it part of your confession, and you tell everybody around you, now he has saved me, he has changed my life, he has transformed my life, and because of that, I have dominion, and sin shall not have dominion over me. Over me. I said over me. Thank God you are victorious in Jesus' name. In the night you are victorious. In the day you are victorious. Behind the closed door you are victorious. In the secret place there you are victorious. You just know, you just know. Whether I'm inside the room or I'm outside in the market. Whether I'm in the village or I'm in the city. Whether it is Sunday or it is a Thursday, any day, any time, sin shall not have dominion over me. Let me hear you say that again. Look at First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, we're looking at verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world whatsoever small whatsoever big whatsoever tall whatsoever educated whatsoever illiterate whatsoever a new convert whatsoever an old timer for whatsoever whosoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory your victory i said this is the victory your victory this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But she that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Any believer there? I said any believer there? If you're a true believer, you overcome. You have dominion in Jesus' name. You see the people that don't have dominion and they're just faking it. And I just pretending and I just uh, saying it so that we can hear but in their inner heart inner mind little little things come to them and they're defeated look at them here look at them here I pray you'll not be like this you'll not be a hypocrite you'll not be a pretender you'll not be a follow follow person I'm just following them I'm just following them I'm not part of them we're talking about the saints it says I'm not part of them we're talking about the righteous it says I'm not part of them we're talking about the people that have dominion it says I'm not part of them we're talking about the people that overcome and it says I'm not part of them thank God I am part of them I said I'm part of victorious people I'm part of overcoming people and part of the people that have dominion you'll have dominion in jesus name but look at the people look at these people now in second peter chapter 2 second peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse i'm reading from verse 18 for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they only speak they cannot do they only say they don't possess and they only try to convince other people they are not convinced themselves because in their hearts they're defeated it says for they for when they say great swelling words of vanity they are leal through the lust of the flesh and through much wantonness those that are clean escaped from them who, to, who live in error look at verse 19 while they promise them liberty while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption 
for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage if something overcomes you if something has dominion over you you're in bondage but if you want to make sure that there's no bondage and satan cannot lay any claim to your life evil spirits cannot lay any claim to your life and any same partner of the past cannot lay any claim on your life a defeated fellow himself a child of satan a person a pilgrim to hell a person on his way to hell cannot have any claim on you you come out of that dominion and you say i am triumphant and i have dominion i will not surrender submit my life to anything defiling anymore and you are free in jesus name name but look at verse 20 but if for if after they have escaped from the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled he was free from drunkenness again now entangled he was free from all the gang and all those thugs is again entangled he was free from occultism is again entangled he was uh, free from robbery going out and you know robbing houses and robbing streets he says he's again entangled he was uh, free he was set free and he has dominion over fornication dominion over adultery dominion over immorality is again entangled you'll not be entangled again I said you'll not be entangled again if it's again entangled therein and overcome and defeated then it says the latter end is worse for them than the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known they have no need to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his vomit again you'll not swallow the vomit anymore look up here have you seen a drunkard it was by the side of the gutter and then he vomited in that gutter because he's still drunk he doesn't understand the difference between clean water and dirty water and he goes on his belly and he begins to swallow up again that vomit is that you i said is that you he has delivered you from corruption he has delivered you from evil he has delivered you from that vomit it's gone out of you it will never come back anymore in jesus name but you see the people that are entangled again entangled again entangled again and they begin to make connections again with the people they left with the sinners they left with all those people evil people they left it says it's happened to them the dog is touched to his vomit again and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire it will not happen to you it's first john first john chapter 5 verse 18 first john chapter 5 verse 18 we know thank god i know i said thank god i know we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not wonderful wonder of all wonders this will be the wonder in your life we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not if you have dominion over sin you're going to have dominion over sickness because that wicked one will not touch you you're going to have dominion over curse over yoke over suffering over whatever it is everything that is of darkness everything will vanish away in your life in jesus name look at that verse again in verse 18 it says we know that whosoever who is that whosoever i said who is that is he available here today is he there today and is he going back home with this victory today 
I rejoice with you, you are victorious. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, sinneth not, sinneth not. In the day, sinneth not. In the night, sinneth not. In the private, sinneth not. In the public, sinneth not. In the office, sinneth not. In the church, sinneth not. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. You'll keep yourself. And that wicked one, tell me, toucheth him not. You are triumphant. You are victorious. You are an overcomer. Look at First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. And we're reading from verse 57. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Which giveth us, tell me, victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read that again. Personalize it now. Say it after me. But thanks be to God. Are you there? But thanks be to God which giveth me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Say that again. But thanks be to God which giveth me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place we we'll come to point number three our dedication to the reigning Lord our dedication to the reigning Lord Romans chapter 14 Romans chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 7 Romans chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 7 in verse 7 it tells us Romans chapter 7 chapter 14 verse 7 for none of us liveth unto himself now that we have come to know the Lord now that we belong to the Lord and we're born again and we're children of God is giving us deliverance from sin it's giving us dominion over sin. It says now our dedication, our commitment, our consecration is to the Lord. For none of us live to himself, and no man dies to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Give me a good amen. amen. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Another good amen whether we live therefore or die we are the lords we belong to god i said you belong to god i said you belong to god look up for a moment it says whether we live or die we belong to the lord if well, you are alive you belong to the lord and you don't belong to any other society when you die you belong to the Lord, body, soul, and spirit. But you know what? There are some people, while we're here together, they say, I'm part of you people. I'm born again to you. I'm a child of God to you. I belong to the Lord. And we took them for their words. And we thought, this is real. And we thought, this is wonderful. We say, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so. And eventually, they died. As they die, we're still thinking that they belong to the Lord. And then a secret society will show up. And then somebody will show up from the shrine and say, We want to do our own part. We say, Which one is your own part? They say, He belongs to us. No, He belongs to us over here because He belongs to the Lord. They say, Look at His certificate of initiation. They say, he wasn't totally coming out to you. He didn't put everything on the table. It belonged to us. 
part of them belongs to a nominal church part of them belongs to a secret society and then when they die all those people come to claim me are you like that you will not be like that in jesus name your soul your spirit your body the totality of the man belonging to the lord you belong to the lord in jesus name you know sometimes there are times that people while they are here with us they praise the lord one man one wife one woman one tell me i can't hear you one woman one husband one man one wife and you know we used to know them brother so and so and look at his wife there sister so and so and eventually now they pass on and we want to you know prepare for burial funeral and everything our brother our brother our brother and then the wife comes up and then somebody 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 another woman comes and we say who are you oh i'm his wife i belong to him he belongs to me from where are you coming this is his wife i said the man did not tell you the truth this one is claiming him that one is claiming him are you there i said are you there you'll be different in jesus name what we know of you in the public what we know of you in the church will know of you in the private as well in jesus name so that when you are alive you belong to the lord and when you are dead completely spirit soul and body you belong to the lord in jesus name and so he tells us whether we are alive or we are dead we belong completely to the lord first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 19 watch know ye not that your body is a temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own that's a dedication you realize you do not belong to yourself for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and your spirit which are god's you totally belong to the lord in jesus name and so uh, there is something i need to show you here look at psalm 106 psalm 106 so that at all times at all times whether we are there or not at all times whether we see you or not at all times whether it's in the day or in the night at all times whether you're in the office or anywhere you find yourself at all times everybody shout at all times let me hear you at all times you see look at this now psalm 106 i'm reading from verse 3 psalm 106 verse 3 it says blessed are they that keep judgment and he this is a man and he this is a woman totally belonging to the lord and you recognize that you know that wherever you are in the office in the church in the village in the city in the bus on the train overseas or here in the land anywhere you are look at that part of verse 3 now it says he that doeth righteousness tell me what follows there tell me what follows there shout it at me shout it at me at all times you know there are sunday sunday christians on monday uh -uh, they're not christians on Wednesday, uh uh, they're not Christians. On Saturday, uh uh, they're not Christians. And then when it comes to a uh, Sunday again, then they take their Bible and they dress up and then they go, I belong to the Lord. Sunday, Sunday Christian. But what does it say here in verse 3? The three words there, one, two, three. The last uh, three words there, shout it at me at all times those are christians those are believers those are the disciples of the lord jesus christ the people wholeheartedly their soul their spirit their mind their nature their character their conduct every part of them belongs to the lord look at that again in verse 3 it says blessed are they 
that keep judgment and he did that doeth righteousness you tell me once again at all times at all times you know you're in the exam hall be a christian at all times and you have just you're just getting married now and you're going to pay dowry at all times be a christian anywhere you find yourself any partner that may be there any partner that may not be there your parents are there your relatives are there they believe what you don't believe or, or they don't believe what you believe you're going to stand on the word of god and say by the grace of god at all times i'm totally dedicated completely dedicated irreversibly dedicated to the word of god it will be your life like that in jesus name give me good good amen psalm 119 psalm 119 i'm reading from verse 20, 128 psalm 119 verse 128 look at this therefore i esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right look at that he says i don't leave any part out i don't say i accept this i don't accept that i believe this i don't believe that i believe in faith i believe in healing i don't believe in holiness look at verse 128 therefore i esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and i hate what do i hate every false way i hate every false way that's how your dominion will come that's how your authority will come and now you're going to have authority you're going to have power and as you go out you go out in the strength of the lord am i talking to somebody there you go out in the power of the lord satan will bow before you sickness will crumble before you suffering will vanish out of your sight scarcity will get out of your life and you march on you march on in victory in jesus name every serpent you will trample over every spirit you will trample over every temptation you will trample over victory 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 i'm coming back i'm coming back to luke chapter 10 i'm coming back to luke chapter 10 and here i am reading from verse 17 here i'm reading from verse 17 it tells us in luke chapter 10 chapter 10 verse 17 and the 17 returns again with joy somebody is happy over there somebody is joyful over there you see victory all around you you see power all around you and it says the 70 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name as you go out the devils will be subject to you in jesus name don't say i'm just a sister sister the devil will be subject under you in the name of jesus and brother don't just say i'm just a newcomer well if you're a newcomer and if you're a new convert and you have got this salvation it's a, it's a, it's yours and brother you're going to have the victory in jesus name verse 18 and he search unto them and he search unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven they will fall as you march on, they will fall. And then it says, Behold, behold, somebody there, behold, you will see something. You will behold something. You will feel something. You will get something. You will experience something. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing 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 shall by any means hurt you. What are you what are you doing sitting down? I thought you would claim your victory. I hope I thought you will come at your victory. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions 
all the cockroaches under your feet all the lizards under your feet all the serpents under your feet all the evil spirit under your feet cancer under your feet and uh, all the curse under your feet incurable disease under your feet hypertension under your feet diabetes under your feet kidney failure under your feet heart attack under your feet curse under your feet yoke under your feet barrenness under your feet and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing shall by any means hurt you open your mouth and declare that's me that's me that's me that's me i have the victory 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 praise the lord you have the victory praise the lord you have the victory praise the lord you have dominion praise the lord you have power over sin over sickness over evil spirit over calamity over everything disaster you have the victory open your mouth and tell the lord open your mouth and tell the lord i have it i have it i have it whosoever is born of god overcomes the world overcomes the world overcomes the world you are an overcomer you are an overcomer go out and overcome go out and succeed go out and have dominion go out and manifest the power go out in confidence go out in faith and understand you have you have you have you have you have dominion christ is on the throne and because he reigns you reign because he reigns you reign Victory has come. Deliverance is affirmed. Your dominion is established. Sin will not have dominion over you. Temptation will not have dominion over you. The flesh will not have dominion over you. Besetting sin will not have dominion over you. Weakness will not have dominion over you. Darkness will not have dominion over you. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Thank God I'm victorious. Thank God I'm victorious. Thank God I have dominion. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. And you're going out in the strength of the Lord. You're going out in the power of the Lord. You're going back home with confidence, knowing you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You possess something. That power will never fail. That name will never fail. That faith will never fail. That knowledge will never fail. That understanding will never fail. The blood will never fail. The blood of Jesus never fail in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have dominion, where are you? If you are triumphant, where are you? If you are militant, where are you? And if you are successful, where are you? If that sea cannot bring you down again, where are you? If that sickness will not attach itself to you anymore, where are you? If those evil spirits are under your feet now, where are you? If poverty has come under your feet, where are you? If sorrow and sadness have come under your feet, where are you? And if you're going to move from success to success, from power to power, and from faith to faith, and from dominion to dominion, and you are totally, you are totally, you are totally delivered, where are you? It is confirmed in Jesus' name. As you go out, go out joyfully go out cheerfully go out happily go out victoriously go out triumphant go out with power go out with confidence 
and you look straight ahead of you and you are moving on to success and you are moving on to victory and you are moving on to dominion and you are moving in the power of the Lord in Jesus name let the weak say let the sick say let the poor say let those who were weak before you are weak before but now but now are you standing but now are you standing let the weak say you are strong you will not faint you will not be feeble you will not fall I see you in victory I see you in power I see you in dominion it is confirmed in your life in Jesus name Resolve those anointed hands, those blessed hands, and everything that hand touches will turn to blessing. Father, in Jesus' name, I praise you for every brother, every sister, every boy, and every girl. I praise you for everyone here. Oh Lord, failure is cancelled in Jesus' name. Farming recession is cancelled in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every sickness, every infirmity cancelled in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray weakness and feebleness cancelled in Jesus' name. Every attack, every affliction cancelled in Jesus' name. Premature death cancelled in Jesus' name. I pray that the power you have given everybody here with hands raised, they possess it right now. They have each right now. And I pray, oh Lord, they will walk, they will not be weary. They will run and they will not faint. And Lord, I pray, breakthrough before everyone. Healing before everyone. Health before everyone. Victory before everyone. Triumph before everyone. In the day, in the night, you are victorious. In the day, in the night, you are prospered. In the day, in the night, you are happy and joyful. In the day, in the night, the Lord will fill your cup and it will run over in Jesus' name. And I pray that everything that is flying by the day, flying by the night, will not get to you. Dominion. 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 Possess it in Jesus' name. And everything that is negative of darkness will come under your feet. Be triumphant for the rest of your life. Victorious for the rest of your life. And I pray that the spirit of the conqueror will be inside you. Energize you. Empower you. And drive you on. Until you get to heaven, you will not fall. You will not fail. You will not stop your journey halfway in Jesus name. You are the beloved of the Lord. Remain blessed for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout. And the victorious people having dominion shout. You are blessed in Jesus' name.